10 years an icon on Robbie Mines. <laughs> The Abu Kaubi, which Indo has done it all. It's been 12 years, 12 years since he started this show. And, you know, he has done hundreds of viral interviews. We're talking about leading pioneered conversations on the show. And he has shown the world that there is no limit to the extent of his talent. The Abu Kaubi, which Indo, I'm so excited to talk to you. I, I mean, you're smiling right now. Are you surprised? Because I have a cold, and I was trying to, but I, I am quite surprised. But I saw the earpiece in your ear, and I yeah, and you knew already. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, but ten years on stage, ten years here. Congratulations to you, an icon. Thank you. It's it was ten years on the sixth of January. Okay. Um, and I remember my very first show and how nervous I was. Um, I, I I tried to look for it on YouTube a few days ago, but I couldn't find it. Thankfully, I'm hoping it's been scrubbed <laughs> off the internet. But yeah, um, 10 years has been quite a ride. I started off the show at a time when I had no experience of yeah. live television. And live television is completely different from anything. Yeah. If you walk on TV, you would pr produce content. You know that live television is completely different. a, a different ball game. So it was quite a challenge at the start, but it's I always say it's probably my favorite show to do these days. Are you serious? I enjoy it. Nothing teaches me lessons and just general knowledge more than this show. I mean, very true, because you talk to a wide yeah. range of people. I have to yeah. do something about everything. Literally. Very true. So, no, but, you know, I, I thought about it. And when I, when I was told for the first time that you were 10 years, you've done 10 years here, yeah, first thing I said to myself was, you come here every Sunday, and I want to know every time you walk through that door, what's on your mind. Do you go, oh, again, we're doing this? <laughs> I think it's, it's so, I've gotten so into the show now that I don't even get into the zone until I'm seated here, right. which is probably like 10 minutes or five minutes to the show. Then I, I, I sit down. Of course, I get the rundown before I get here. I kind of have an idea what I'm going to be talking about. And it's always a diverse uh, set of conversations, from politics to sports to entertainment right. to personalities, interviews, or whatever it is. So um, I, I have gotten into the groove over the years mm -hmm. because now I kind of know what to do. Yeah. I know how to handle live television when I'm speaking and the director is screaming in my ear or someone yeah. is walking past behind the camera. In the past, I would be distracted by that yes. right now. So it's kind of like second nature for Yeah, because I'm trying to navigate that right now. Because I'm, <laughs> I'm like, what's going on? What's going on? You know, because I'm, I'm very tense. I'm like, this live TV, I don't, I don't think I've ever done that before. And I know 10 years. But you, when, when, you, when you took the job and you walked through this door, yeah. did you know you were going to do 10 years? Not at all. Um, I wasn't sure what I was going to do. Um, I, I came in, I was unemployed. Let me say that first of all. I had been unemployed right. for about over a year because I just finished my master's, came back to Nigeria before I had this great conversation with Chude, who said, you know, let's start a do this. Yeah. Um, so I came in not knowing exactly what it was going to become, but I, I, I love interviewing people. So I knew I was going to enjoy it. Right. I didn't know that I was going to enjoy it for this long. So the whole idea was come in, get in the groove, get a few personality interviews going, and then see where it ends up. Um, there are people who keep wondering, oh, wow, I can't believe you've done this for this long. Yes. Either they thought I would have left at some point. Or... No, because I, that's, that's, <laughs> sorry, that's the first thing I said. I said, if I was going to come here 10 years every day, every yeah. Sunday, I, I'm not sure. Religiously. And to my producers, I've never gotten a time off. I only am not on the show if I'm not able to make it. Right. I've never said I've never had a time where they say, Buka, okay, you are on leave. You're on leave. It's no, but I mean now you deserve years. that rest. It I, deserves... Please let me tell them. Because <laughs> the, every time I have to say, Oh, I can't be there, they're like, ah, ah. So oh, what, I have what? to now get or oh, we have to pre record. And I think I don't complain about it, honestly, yes. because I enjoy doing it. Um, I mean, now that I'm married, uh, the first three, four years I did it for, I was single. After getting married, it does take away sometimes from Sunday time with family. Right. But I think my family has also adjusted to the fact that, okay, we see you in the morning, then we then see you in the evening. <laughs> so it kind of works. But I mean, you've seen everybody work through, yeah, you've seen people come and go. I mean, I used to talk to so many people. What makes it different every time you have to talk to someone here? Yeah. I think every time I meet someone who I, because I'm human, I think we're yeah. all human, you have perceptions of your guests before they come and sit down. You kind of have an, a, a belief of what they would 
sound, sound like or what their beliefs would be or what their opinions would be. So I'm always excited when people surprise me, hopefully mostly good. But yeah, I've had a few people who have come here, I thought they were going to be a certain way and I'm just like, oh wow, you are quite intense or quite diverse mm -hmm. you know, or quite deep with your thoughts. So that always excites me and I get that almost every Sunday. Yeah, true, but I mean, that's fair. But you know, the younger generation, all of us, we look, we look <laughs> up to you. You've done it all. You've shown us that we can, you know, break every band, you know, just reach every height. And we're so proud of you, literally. Okay. And you know, you were talking about navigating each conversation. And I know you've been friends with a lot of people you've spoken to here, right? And <laughs> very interesting. I don't know if you know what I'm about to say right now, <laughs> but I know that some of the conversations have affected some of your friendships, yes, yeah. relationship. Nine years ago, someone walked off. <laughs> <laughs> Someone walked off from this from this um, stage right now. Yes, I, I was that. So yes, I've had a few people. I mean, in the past, mm -hmm. I used to be quite intense with the way I asked questions. Yeah, I still am, but I think. And you did it in such a subtle way. Yeah, I think maturity now yes. has made it a lot more subtle, mm -hmm. but I still am able to get the information I want out of the person. But in the past, I used to be quite intense and direct, you know, and it did affect a few relationships. The one you're talking about was uh, with Toke Makino. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Who I had a conversation with here, was it nine or ten years ago? She came, and as soon as I said, thanks for joining us, have a good Sunday, she yanked the earpiece from her ear and walked off. And we laugh about it now. She didn't talk to me for a couple of months. I mean, you really won't walk together that. after that. <laughs> but, you know, old things have passed away. And be old. <laughs> and uh, we're very good friends now. We laugh about it. <laughs> I mean, and you, and you see, you even say on sets on, with Big Brother. Yes. Most time. And, you know, I want to know, how have you been able to differentiate and distinct, you know, these two separate entities, Robbie Mines, Big Brother, and you yeah. came from Big Brother yourself, you did Big yeah. Brother, and yes. you've been able to carve a niche for yourself and, you know, be that icon and legend that everybody looks up to. And well, let me let no, <laughs> Come on, you know, you know, you know, you know, <laughs> you know, you know, I mean, uh, but really, how have you been able to distinct both platforms? Um, so bef when I started Dropping Minds in 2013, a few months down the line, I became the co-host on a different show on Ebony Life TV at the time called The Spot. So I think uh, that sort of I'm not that me. old. I watched that one. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that prepared me for where I was going. I had to now navigate two completely different shows at the same time on air. And then a lot of other shows have also come up along the way, which I've had right. to sort of separate myself or have different personalities on. Right now, I do Robin Mines, I do Big Brother, I do a show called Judging Matters, which is a courtroom-based show. Yeah. Um, I also have a podcast radio thing called The Black Box yeah. as well. So, but when I come here, right, I, I, I keep a completely open mind because I learn, like I say, I come here and I learn the most. I have a sure. guest who's a neurosurgeon. I have no idea what that is what about. That is. I have to just keep an open mind and, you know, understand where they're coming from. Or I have a politician who's been a politician for 30 years. Mm. No matter what I know by reading they, they or by not, watching they, stuff, so they are in, uh, experienced in that. So I come here with a very open mind and it helps me, you know, to sort of navigate um, my job here. It's quite tough sometimes, to be honest, to separate them. Especially scheduling. I think that's the toughest part of it. The timing of things, right. which sometimes things overlap or cross over, and then one has to suffer for the other. But with regards to delivery, I think most times when I'm in a, in a space, I kind of just sip into what that space requires, and it works for me. I mean, and <laughs> we see the social media, and we're like, oh, you do... No, you. that's... <laughs> That right, that's the interview. That's the interview okay. right there. <laughs> if you're watching right now, hi. I, I mean, but, you know, every young person looks up to you, really. But can I want to know what's your advice to any young person who is watching right now? Well, like I like to you young. I'm young. No, but you mean, you, you understand what I'm saying. I know, I'm just kidding. If you, had, if you had 10 years to my life right now, if you had 10 years to my age. I know what you mean. Yeah. Um, so it depends on what career path you're trying to choose. Um, uh, with this, t these times are quite different from when I started. You know, I, I did my first TV show completely in 2006. Um, it was a show on NTA at the time. It was a game show, and um, back then you had three, four, five TV channels. 
uh, that wow. you could work with. There was nothing like podcasting or vlogging or mm -hmm. content creation. creation. You know, now there's a lot more variety or a Very lot true. more options for you to explore. So then the fight was more trying to get on a platform. These days it's more trying to create your brand, brand. if you can get on a platform and Very see true. where things take you. So I think I'm also learning from you guys, to be honest, because it's a completely different time and it's just how you guys go for it. Back then, I don't know a lot, that a lot of us could have just woken up and said, yeah, I want to start something. Sure. Maybe because the platforms were not there. But so I'm also learning from that. But I think most importantly, what I would say to a lot of people who are starting off in whatever career it is um, right now is to understand that some of these things might not always work as quickly as you think. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of conversations with people in their mid to early 20s, and sometimes I'm honestly disheartened by some of the things I hear, you yeah. know, that the aspiration to own certain things before I'm 25, yeah. or to be at a certain point in my career at a certain age, you know, does this believe that by the time you're 30, the world is over? Oh my God, at 30, I haven't done anything. At 30, I wasn't working. I had no job at 30. <laughs> I can look at it now and laugh. Yeah. But I had worked from 23 to 28. I was having a good run. I had three TV shows on at the time at, at, wow. at one point. At 28, I moved to the United States to go get a master's, master's degree. degree. I came back and I was unemployed for a year and a half. Like literally, I had no job. I wasn't making any money. So the idea that you have to be this person yeah, so much this pressure. Thing at a certain age, I think the pressure is a lot. I don't know that it's ever going to go away because we live in a world now that everything is in your face. So it's harder to look away yeah. or fight it. But it's just to understand that things sometimes take, take time. time. Some people might make it in a week or in a year, and then your lower can blow up in one year or two years. But not everybody's story is going to be that way. It's probably going to take you a little longer. But when you hit it, you might hit even bigger than the person who did it in a year. Sure. So that's just I, that's one thing I think I see recurring. recurring. Young people. I mean, I the agree with impatience. you. Impatience. I agree yeah. with you because some, even me, I get pressure sometimes. You know, I just starting the new year, you're thinking to your yourself what's what can you do that's better what can you use to be that yeah. you know it takes a, a time out of you to just be patient and you know relax and say to myself okay i'm still younger see yeah. still got a long way to go i mean in all of these shows that you've done you've done so many shows i would want to know what's your favorite show so far the one the one that keeps recurring in your memory and you say oh i really enjoyed this one for different reasons. But first of all, the very first show I ever did, which was Friend for Four, I always just say, I feel so bad for the producers. <laughs> I learned my work there <laughs> on everything. <laughs> then, of course, for live television, I learned live television on this show. Yes. And I'm forever grateful for that. Um, I work with amazing people, the crew. Some of them I've been with over these last 10 years. They watched me grow and advised me along the way. So for that, I'm very grateful as well. I mean, shows like Big Brother give me a completely different outlook. Outlook. You know, the audience is different. It's probably younger. It's more continental. So for different reasons, but I keep saying, and I say that anywhere, that Robin Minds has been my biggest teacher. And I never take that for granted. Whether it's how to interview people, whether it's how to interact with people, right. how to handle live television, my career growth as a whole. It's one of the reasons why I'm still here. Because every Sunday I come here, I know I'm going to go away with something. As something. annoying as my producers can yeah. be sometimes. <laughs> but I come here and I'm always very grateful for the lessons for, I've for, learned. For the lessons you've learned. And you know, you, you mentioned your producers now. And I'm quite, two of them <laughs> who are my friends. One is my close friend. And one, you know, I see him as a mentor. And, and they said I should ask you this question backstage. And I want to know now, <laughs> who is your favorite producer amongst these two? Um... Definitely Shell. Wow. Back, I'm so Desmond. sorry, Desmond. Desmond. Desmond, I have a bunch of people with you. Desmond is a good guy, I have to say. He's young. He's coming to his own. In the last year, I've watched him grow. Yeah. Um, but we're still, you know, learning from each other, how to handle each other. But I'm very excited for where he's going. You know, I know that he had a passion for on-air work. Yep. Um, I, I'm hearing that it's sort of pivoted to more production. And I'm excited for where he's going to go with that. Shewon, on the other hand, I've worked with much longer. A long time. You know, almost throughout my entire stay on this yeah. show. He doesn't have our time anymore. He's a big man now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very grateful for how much we have grown together to where this show has become. But I'm going to 
Desmond and Shewan, and everybody who's passed through this show. Temizan, your friend, was once an associate producer on the show. Oh, wow. We have so many people who have passed through this I mean, so many people sort of channel been, yeah. <laughs> to I, where I, they are today. So. I, lo I love it. I do know now you're mentioning so many people have worked through this place and so many people, uh, you know, have learned so much from you and, you know, working here. And I want to know what's your own greatest lesson from working here in these 10 years? What's, what lesson would always remain in I your mind? I think the one big lesson, and yeah. I say that because I, I learn that almost every Sunday, is never judge a book by its cover. Mm. And I think it's very important for Nigerians or human beings as a whole. Because I've been guilty of that a lot of times where I've, heard a, I've had a guest and I just sort of assumed because of what, what you have heard about be, them. What I've yes. heard about them or what I think about them. And then it surprised me every Sunday. Yep. So I think that's my biggest lesson. I, 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 I like. It. I don't know why I was expecting something really new. I, and, and I, I, I mean, I mean, and that's that's very interesting to you and, and really good because now you've spoken to so many people. And I want to know what what interview is always at the back of your mind. I want that. What you probably say? That's oh, this is my favorite. I I remember this one. Oh. Three, three, three different scenarios. One, yeah. we had a youth debate before the 2015 elections, and everybody who was on that debate is sort of a big name now in politics. And I'm very proud of wow. the fact that we showcased them on Robin Mind, so I like that. Reminis, I always talk about him, the artist. He was one of those people who I wasn't sure what I was going to expect from him, but he's come here twice, and the two times he's been Spoken. here. He completely blew me away. Last but not least, for a very interesting reason I can't completely disclose, but it was Asari Dokubo, who is, uh, was known as a militant at the yeah. time, or a Niger Delta activist, and is a politician now. And his persona on air and off air was it's quite different and exciting. I was just like, oh, interesting. You know, we see him as this guy who's very fierce. Yeah. But off air, he was quite personable and it was quite interesting to see that. So I see that quite often as well. Would you yeah. say that was one of your earliest interviews to do? It was quite, I, I had to prepare really tough for it because I wasn't sure what to expect from him, you know, but it went very well and I remember that very well. It was good. Yeah, yeah. really. I'm, right. I'm, 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 trying to, I'm trying to understand now. So, you know, you've done so many interviews and you, you've done so many things. And what was the, prepar what's the preparation process like before you get well, you, it's before simple, your action? I, I get a rundown from the producers and right. then I kind of do my research as well for what I think would be timely um, for, for the occasion. Um, but most of my producers do quite a bit of work, but I also do my research, especially when it's a personal inter interview, because you need to make the person feel comfortable yeah. and make them feel like you know them, so that you're not asking unfamiliar questions. But it takes quite a process. I mean, so why are you saying <laughs> to the next 10 years now? <laughs> we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. All right, it was really lovely speaking to you, Abel Kam. So I'm so proud of you, and I'm so honored. I learned from you every time, and it was really lovely to be here. Thank you very much yeah. for doing this, and uh, I'm very proud of you as well, and I uh, can't wait to see you do even more amazing things. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you.